Hey everybody, it is me, Retro Thomas of YouTube fame. So, I'm here to show you what I've done uh, in the last few weeks or so with my project. I'll start by saying my productivity hasn't exactly been at a record high, but I think that your energy and your interest in things can be cyclical, you know, it can wax and wane, go up and down, blah blah blah. So, you know, I, I still follow my philosophy of a little bit of something every day is the minimum of what I'll accept. So I do you know, five minutes of looking at my uh, my documents and I'll probably go ahead and get into programming a bunch of stuff more often than not. So that's my tip for this uh, video to you today is if you don't have a lot of energy, it's better to do a little bit of something every day, whether you get into it or not, because, you know, a little bit of something for two weeks, um, you know, is better than nothing. So there you go. So low productivity, but I still have a lot to show you. So here we go. First thing, I think I'll do a little bit of a recap here. Last time I showed you um, how I have these map zones, right? Just like in Mega Man. So if I go to the edge of this little screen I have set up, you see how it shifts over, just like in one of those classic games, right? So it does this either way, and I can go up and down. And I'll show you that now. Whee, there we go. So I can again, I can go back up this way. Pretty cool, huh? So, man, that took a lot of work to get that crap going. So again, let me show you Z mode. This is where I can actually view the map layers themselves. When I do this, um, it skips all of the code that, that does uh, map zone checking and uh, camera transitions and everything like that. And it simply follows the player X and Y coordinates. And this lets me actually put tiles in places a little more easily. So like I can you know manage in these areas in between zones a little more easily than I could if I you know wasn't in that, that zone. So. Um, also, I, I made a change here. Um, if I click on the right hand side, I can adjust the width via the console like I believe I showed you in my previous video. But instead of clicking here in the top left corner of the zone when it gets highlighted here um, and changing the X and Y via the console, now I drag it around, which is very nice. It's a lot more handy than you know having to look at the previous value and come up with a new one based on the coordinates I'm seeing down in the bottom right here from edit mode whatever that's a bunch of nonsense so what I do is just drag it around so that is very handy the other thing is I made it so that I can't put these zones inside each other at first I was like you know how do I prevent this and move it back if it collides and I'm using the same collision code that the players use and I said wait there's another big tip for this week I already told you one but here's number two um, if you can prevent an undesirable condition then prevent it. Don't go and figure out how to work around it or fix it after the fact. Simply prevent it. So now I don't have this, you know, I keep losing it because I'm moving my mouse too fast. But um, I don't have it, you know, colliding with this zone no matter how high I move it. Whereas before they would all get on top of each other and I drag them together and it was a whole nightmare. So that was a cool way to go about it. Another th point I'll make is that this zone that I'm in is smaller than this, the, uh, the camera size as you can see. I did this so that um, if I made a zone that was smaller than the camera, it would simply lock to the screen and uh, wouldn't go left or right or up or down because, you know, in a lot of those games, you have like a single screen that you go to. So I found that was the easiest way to do it instead of making logic like if, you know, to, to um, stay on either side or whatever else. So um, I also have some interesting... Okay, let me get back in the right zone here. Um, transition effects. So you can see right here where the edge of the zone is, right? Um, instead of immediately going over, like if I went over right there and I didn't add a little margin like I did, the player would have been off the left-hand side of the screen. Now you can see that, what's a good way to explain this to you? All right, let me get rid of this little margin and I'm gonna pop something in here from the toolbar. All right, so we have this big ugly blue block. Apologies to Honeybee who drew it for me as she is learning, you know, what looks NES like and what doesn't and has a good level of detail. Anyway, right now the right hand side of this block is at the edge of this map zone, okay? Now if I go over, notice that what should have been the complete right hand side of the zone right here is still on the camera, right? WTF. Well, I added a margin because if I completely transitioned over and made it to the edge of the original zone, like the right hand side, of the last zone would be the left hand side of this one you wouldn't see the player 
So I added a margin onto the screen so that the player will always be visible, which makes sense. Now if I go this way to the right, go back to the left, you can see that now that area is no longer visible. So those zones will cancel themselves out so that uh, if they didn't and I turned around, see how immediately you transition before you reach the edge of the screen? Doesn't look quite right, right? So, so what I did, now notice this extra space here will disappear when I go to the left and back to the right. So, so that's what I did to uh, sort of get around that problem. Up and down didn't really have that problem. I just sort of did a test um, to make sure that as soon as you touch the next zone, it transitions. But it would infinitely transition up and down over and over and over and stick the player there. So what I had to do was say, don't check zone transitions until the player has completely entered the zone. And then we were all set. Alright, so crossing those off the list, that is map zones and camera transitions. Those are pretty much ready to go, and I'm just waiting on artwork from my artist there to uh, continue making an actual level and make sure all the tile crap works correctly. Now, somebody in the comments left me a pretty helpful idea that I should have a feature where I can show or hide individual tile layers, you know, toggle their visibility separately. Turns out that was a really helpful thing. I was jumping in the air over here, as the player and I had a bunch of collisions happening which was not right because this is all stuff that should be in the background so I made it so I can hide all the, la the layers I made it so that I see there was a map transition <laughs> then I made it so I can show all of the um, layers and I made it so that I can show or hide individual layers now where this would be helpful is for example on the background I've got two background two collision layers so four layers total so far that way I can do things like I can, you know, this this uh, support beam that's partially <laughs> created here. Um, I can put that in the, f the closer background layer and put the actual background tiles in the further background layer. So you can see right now, as I show and hide, let me, let me get rid of everything, I'll add the background layers one at a time. Um, okay, so this is the rear background layer, this is the front background layer. I decided that all of these background tiles should be in the rear background layer, but they're not. So this is a really helpful feature, because then I can go, I can hide everything and show the front background layer, and then I can just delete all of these tiles with my, you know, delete paintbrush sort of tool that I made, and only leave the stuff that should be in the foreground, right? So now when I show all the layers, you can see that I have much less stuff than I did. Now I just loaded the map to show you the difference, but this will essentially just simply let me isolate different layers that I have going on and then I can draw things exactly where they're supposed to be. I can also lock it so I can I will only edit the active layer that way I can't you know move tiles that aren't visible at the time and it should just simply make um, editing things a lot easier. So if I have a bunch of these beams I want to work on I could just show this one layer and do that without having to worry about accidentally selecting things in the background and then bring it all back together. Um, so that, that made it a little easier. So you can see here, these um, are in two different layers, these collision tiles. So that would make a difference because I might want special effects, um, things that are on different layers. And I, uh, I can't think of an example right now why I want two different collision layers, but whatever. It's there, which is great. So uh, those are the new features that I pretty much did. It, it, I don't know. It can take a lot of work, but these seem like sort of big things to really get all these transitions working well, make it so I could have Z mode and uh, activate these, um, move these map zones all around. Um, it wasn't a lot of work to do, but it was very helpful. So I'm very happy that I did those things. So next up, again, is to make an actual level. And uh, then I'll probably find some more bugs with the toolbar since I haven't used it in forever and ever and ever. Uh, and I'll probably... Uh, change the way that that's done so that it's a little more intuitive but it seems like it's just a progress of uh, refining things slowly and I'm a bit of, of a perfectionist when it comes to the code and the map editor so I want it to really work well so that it'll be a pleasure to make the game and not have to wrestle with things and wish I went you know had did them differently in the beginning so I'm taking my time and doing it the best I can so I can get the best result so if you're working on something I'd uh, be happy to hear about it or follow you on Twitter or do whatever else. I should have a new entry on my blog pretty soon at newretrogames.com regarding how the map editor is put together. So thanks for watching. I hope to hear your positive comments to keep me going and uh, wish you all the best. So until next time, Thomas out.